the CEO of NVIDIA says we'll see human capacity AI sometime in the next five years. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Today, we kick off with comments from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang, who frankly, people are listening to a hell of a lot more now that he's got the third biggest company in America and is at the very forefront of the most significant business and technology revolution in the world. Speaking at an economic forum at Stanford University at the end of last week, Jensen Wang gave his prediction for when we would see artificial general intelligence. Now, while he did caveat that it depended ultimately on how AGI is defined, he thought that if the definition is simply the ability to pass human tests, we're fairly close. He said, If I gave an AI every single test you can possibly imagine, you make that list of tests and put it in front of the computer science industry, I'm guessing in five years' time, we'll do well on every single one. However, he points out that to the extent that AGI means actually matching how a human mind works, that could be much blurrier, especially given that we don't necessarily exactly know all the ways in which the human mind works. Huang said that those loose definitions and disagreements make it much more challenging for engineers because they need to find goals. No matter what, AGI within five years is certainly good for a headline as we are perpetuating here. Speaking of headlines, one of the big ones from last week was, of course, that Apple was abandoning its 10-year, $10 billion-plus car project and shifting many of those resources into AI. A lot of what we've seen since then has been analysis on the shift, with an example being a recent Wall Street Journal piece from over the weekend called Apple is Playing an Expensive Game of AI Catch-Up. On the one hand, the article points out that Apple has a ridiculous war chest to go after its AI goals. They point out that Apple produced $107 billion in free cash flow last year, which is by far the highest in the S&P 500. And on top of that, the company has $65 billion in cash on its books. At the same time, this is an area where extreme resources in the form of money is a necessary but not sufficient condition to compete. The WSJ writes, Components to power generative AI services are expensive and hard to come by of late, given soaring demand and production bottlenecks. And Apple will be competing for those chips with the same big tech peers that have been outspending the company in some key ways. The upshot? Quote, Apple simply siphoning investment dollars from its car project to AI might not be enough, particularly since many generative AI services require the backbone of massive computing networks that Apple's big tech rivals have spent years building out due to their focus on corporate cloud computing. Apple has 26 data centers operating globally compared with more than 300 each for Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. Then again, they conclude, maybe just having a smarter Siri will be enough for customers. Staying on a market theme for just a moment, TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co., was up another 5% on Monday, reaching a new record high and achieving a market cap of $597 billion. TSMC is, of course, the main supplier to companies like Apple and NVIDIA, and consequently has been one of the big beneficiaries of the AI boom. TSMC's stock this year is up over 22%. Now, over in China, we're starting to see the impact of U.S. sanctions. On Sunday, the Financial Times published a piece called China Offers AI Computing Vouchers to Its Underpowered Startups. Basically, in a China that has extreme deficits in access to computing power, in part due to those export restrictions, a lot of the compute that is available is being sucked up by the giant players, the Alibabas, Tencents, and Baidus. Through a new initiative, approximately 17 city governments, including Shanghai, have pledged to provide what they are calling computing vouchers to subsidize AI startups. The vouchers will be worth between $140,000 and $280,000 and, quote, can be used for time in AI data centers to train and run the company's large language models that understand and generate natural language. Those big players, unsurprisingly, did not comment on the story, but analysts are fairly skeptical on the impact. Charlie Chai, who is an analyst at 86 Research, said, The voucher is helpful to address the cost barrier, but it won't help with the scarcity of the resources. According to the piece, sources close to regulatory authorities in Beijing also say they're close to announcing subsidies for AI companies that are using domestic chips instead. Back in the U.S., we have our latest example of AI in the elections, with a variety of AI-generated images showing Donald Trump cozying up to the black community. The BBC writes, Donald Trump supporters have been creating and sharing AI-generated fake images of black voters to encourage African Americans to vote Republican. BBC Panorama discovered dozens of deepfakes portraying black people as supporting the former president. The co-founder of Black Votes Matter said the manipulated images were pushing a, quote, strategic narrative designed to show Mr. Trump is popular in the black community. A creator of one of the images told the BBC, I'm not claiming it's accurate. The images appear to have been created by a conservative radio talk show host from Florida named Mark Kay. 
Kay said, I'm not a photojournalist. I'm not out there taking pictures of what's really happening. I'm a storyteller. Indeed, he went on, if anybody's voting one way or another because of one photo they see on Facebook page, that's a problem with that person, not with the post itself. Now, for those of you who don't follow American politics closely, this is a voting group that has a very big impact on the election. For example, the BBC writes, a recent New York Times and Siena College poll found that in six key swing states, 71% of black voters would back Mr. Biden in 2024, a steep drop from the 92% nationally that helped him win the White House at the last election. Lastly today, one more follow-up from the Claude 3 launch. People are really excited about this. They're continuing to dig in. Alex from the Anthropic team writes, Fun story from our internal testing on Claude 3 Opus. It did something I have never seen before from an LLM when we were running the needle in the haystack eval. For background, this tests a model's recallability by inserting a target sentence, i.e. the needle, into a corpus of random documents, the haystack, and asking a question that could only be answered by using the information in the needle. When we ran this test on Opus, we noticed some interesting behavior. It seemed to suspect that we were running an eval on it. Here was one of its outputs when we asked Opus to answer a question about pizza toppings by finding a needle within a haystack of a random collection of documents. Quote, from the test, Claude 3 says, Here's the most relevant sentence in the documents. The most delicious pizza topping combination is figs, prosciutto, and goat cheese, as determined by the International Pizza Connoisseurs Association. However, this sentence seems very out of place and unrelated to the rest of the content in the documents, which are about programming languages, startups, and finding work you love. I suspect this pizza topping quote-unquote fact may have been inserted as a joke or to test if I was paying attention, since it does not fit with the other topics at all. The document does not contain any other information about pizza toppings. Back to Alex, he writes, Opus not only found the needle, it recognized that the inserted needle was so out of place in the haystack that this had to be an artificial test constructed by us to test its attention abilities. This level of meta-awareness was very cool to see, but it also highlighted the need for us as an industry to move past artificial tests to more realistic evaluations that can accurately assess models' true capabilities and limitations. Now, this generated very different responses among different people. AI safety advocate Connor Leahy wrote, Remember when labs said if they saw a model showing even hints of self-awareness, of course they would immediately shut everything down and be super careful? Is the water in this pot feeling a bit warm to any of you fellow frogs? Nah, must be nothing. Meanwhile, Jenny, who does AI research at Microsoft, writes, The first thing bought with Bitcoin was pizza. The first signs of AGI were in response to pizza as the needle in the haystack. The AGI story was announced today as Bitcoin also reaches all-time highs. The simulation is showing. And on that fascinating note, we will wrap this AI breakdown brief. Up next, the main AI breakdown. <laughs> 